Hi, uh, welcome everyone to Trino Summit. My name is Alagappan. I work as a software engineer at Netflix Big Data Compute Engine team. And Trino is one of the very popular SQL query engine offering by our team. In this talk, I'll be talking about our experience running Trino at an exabyte scale data warehouse. For today's agenda, we'll begin with the data platform architecture at Netflix. Followed by that, a quick sneak peek of our iceberg usage details. We will then move to internal Trino architecture, features developed, and our future plans with Trino. To begin with, most of our analytical data are stored in AWS S3 in iceberg table format. Additionally, we have data stored in Druid and relational databases. For compute, most of our heavy workloads and ETL jobs use Apache Spark. Trino is the most popular choice for low latency queries and ad hoc analysis. We also use Snowflake. For ultra low latency queries, and real-time analysis we used through it. We have a number of internal services built to help our data platform users. Some of them are uh, Maestro. Uh, Maestro is our in-house workflow orchestrator. Due to our scale, existing orchestrator tools like Airflow weren't able to cater to our needs, so we ended up creating one. Uh, we recently open-sourced it. I have attached a link to it at the end of the PPT. Uh, please do check it out. Uh, Genie is another open source project from Netflix. It's a federated big data execution engine. Genie abstracts away a lot of the details from the end user, like the cluster details, data dependencies, library version. It provides REST APIs for the users to submit and monitor their jobs without having uh, to install any claims or uh, no details about uh, the clusters or command themselves. Uh, Metacad is our internal federated metadata service. Uh, this is again an open source project. It's kind of comparable with systems like Hive Metastore, uh, but this not only stores metadata information about big data tables, but it can also store and serve metadata information about other data sources such as RDBMS, Cassandra, Redshift, et cetera. Uh, with respect to tools, we use a wide variety of BA tools, including Superset, Looker, Tableau. Uh, we use Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, also, we have our own internal big data portal for users to run query, discover their data, schedule workflows. Uh, and there are a lot of other uh, Java application internal tools uh, that connects with uh, the Trino. Uh, okay, coming to uh, the Iceberg usage at Netflix. Uh, as most of you might know, Iceberg was created at Netflix. Being the original creators of Iceberg, we use it extensively. To illustrate the size of the data Netflix deals with, uh, I'd like to share some Iceberg metrics. Our data warehouse now exceeds one exabyte in storage with over 3 million tables. Currently, 99.5% of our tables are in iceberg format, and we aim to reach 100% by next year. Our largest table is around 36 petabyte, and it continues to grow. We ingest about 10 petabyte of data per day and delete around 9 petabyte of data every day. We replicate about 2 petabyte of data across regions. At our peak, we do about 600 table commit operations per second and about 12,000 table load operations per second. Uh, Trino is a widely used SQL query engine on Netflix. Uh, every day, our production clusters receive more than 500,000 queries. Uh, approximately, we ran 15 million queries just in November 2024 alone, uh, out of which 3 million queries or ad hoc queries, 4 million queries were scheduled queries, 2.6 million queries were audit queries, and there's also a wide variety of other use cases for Trino, which uh, contributes to like 5 million queries. Uh, we have over uh, 2,500 uh, users. Our user groups range from data analysts to data engineers and data scientists. Uh, audit is one of the popular use cases of Trino. Uh, when users schedule workflow or ETL jobs, they can define some quality checks on the data set produced. Uh, for instance, they can uh, check whether if certain partition is empty or uh, if a certain column has received a negative uh, sum uh, and things like that. Uh, so coming to uh, internal Trino's architecture, uh, we have a lot of tools that talks with Trino clusters, uh, like BA tools, Superset, Looker, Tableau, and these tools connect via Trino JDBC plugin. Uh, we also have an internal Python library called Kregel that serves as an abstraction layer for Python users to submit and monitor Trino jobs. Maestro is our workflow orchestrator, as we discussed earlier, and which can run Trino jobs directly or via Genie. Other popular sources are Jupyter Notebooks and Golang clients. Uh, we use Titus for our deployment. Titus is Netflix cloud container runtime. It uses Kubernetes under the hood. It's more like a Kubernetes plus plus. Titus helps us handle deployment, scaling, node failures, replacements of 
fail nodes, and a lot more. Uh, we have built an internal iceberg catalog to talk to our MetaCat service, which the iceberg connector uses. Uh, we have plans to move to iceberg rest catalog very soon. All data are stored as iceberg tables in S3. Apart from iceberg connector, we support Hive, Druid, MySQL, and Postgres connectors too. Uh, Parquet is our most popular choice for data files. Uh, other than that, we also have uh, data files in Avro format. Uh, we have over 20 plus production Trino clusters, uh, approximately 1,100 Trino nodes. We use over 50,000 virtual CPUs. We have worker nodes of different memory sizes from 48 GB to 380 GB. Uh, additionally, we have a custom internal ACL-based Netflix access control mechanism, which is used to authorize user request. Uh, in fact, we manage all our table permissions, grants, revokes via Trino. Uh, all the direct S3 access is blocked for all the users, uh, and uh, all the uh, table-level access are uh, made by the coordinator using the Netflix access control mechanism. Uh, in terms of observability, we use a library called Spectator to log all the metrics as time series data. All the coordinator and worker nodes sense metrics using this library. It's designed to work with Atlas. Atlas is a time series database that was developed by Netflix. We use a system called Radar, which does real-time anomaly detection and remediation using the data from Atlas. We have special dashboards designed to monitor the cluster usage, cluster resource availability, and queue status. Uh, in addition to this, we have also developed a custom Netflix event listener plugin on top of the existing event listener framework in Trino. Uh, existing event listener in Trino captures events like query created, query completed, split completed. Uh, in addition, we also have the ability to capture stage completed and task completed events, which we enable for deep dive into issues. Uh, also, the events are packed with additional metadata. Uh, for instance, which Titus cluster group the instance was running on, so that we can get system level log in case if needed. All the query events are sent to Keystone. Uh, Keystone is Netflix streaming data platform. Uh, we use it for real-time data processing. It integrates Apache Kafka and Apache Flink to provide streaming abstractions. All the events are processed and then inserted into an iceberg table. We use that information to do further analysis, such as measure the average cluster runtime improvements after a version upgrade, uh, query, queuing pattern, uh, historical load pattern, and a lot more. Uh, coming to some of the general Trino features that we have built uh, internally, uh, we have already talked about uh, Netflix access control, MetaCap connector, and Netflix event listener plugins. Uh, other than that, we have lineage logging. Uh, lineage logging involves tracking of the flow and transformation of data across various systems. So all the operations like table scan, CTAS, RTAS operation, insert up and delete operation are all logged with useful properties like uh, which table was accessed, uh, which columns in the table was accessed, the user who accessed the uh, table, what query ID caused the change, uh, which workflow caused the change, uh, which source system initiated the uh, query. So all these kind of details. And we use it to track how uh, data has been transformed from one form to the other. Uh, we then display this information uh, in graphs so that the users can identify the flow of the data and like how the data has reached uh, a certain table. We also have a rich set of uh, internal Netflix UDFs. Uh, one common problem we see while creating views or upgrading to newer version or trying to run the same query in different query engine is the uh, systems function names, uh, signature, input output types have minor variations causing failures. Uh, so due to these mild differences in the inbuilt system functions, uh, we started developing um, a lot of internal Netflix UDFs, uh, which have common signature across query engines. So it has the common input output types, common return types. Uh, so this kind of solves um, uh, cross querying and view uh, creation, uh, querying the view created in one engine in uh, another engine to an extent. Uh, also, uh, the another feature that we have developed is uh, Druid Pushdown. Uh, Druid is one of uh, the extensive used query engine within Netflix, and we have users who query Druid data from Trino and join with the other data sources. Uh, the queries are generally slow due to lack of aggregation pushed down into Druid. Uh, Trino would issue a scan or search query and ask Druid to send all the matching records back to Trino. 
Trino would then do the aggregation of all these records on its worker. Uh, this is generally very slow as Druid isn't designed for this scan search use case and it could do much better job at doing aggregation on its end. Uh, so we uh, ended up building uh, the aggregation push down uh, into Druid for uh, efficient query plans. Uh, we were able to see a very good performance improvement. Uh, we also experimented with uh, HDFS based caching solution and uh, autoscalers. Uh, some of the uh, iceberg specific features, uh, the materialist view feature in Trino was initially developed by uh, Netflix and later contributed back to open source. Uh, we also support uh, certain uh, additional keywords apart from uh, what's there in OSS. For instance, we have support for ad, ad keyword using which the users can specify certain snapshot or timestamp. Uh, we also support additional metadata tables uh, on top of like the existing uh, open source iceberg metadata tables. For instance, we have support for entries table and IRC metadata table, which captures information such as uh, what's the snapshot ID in which uh, file was uh, added and uh, what's the commit timestamp associated with a, a file. Uh, also, uh, we have a distributed metadata table scan and incremental read feature. Uh, to talk about them in detail, um, the distributed metadata table scan. Metadata tables, um, the iceberg metadata tables is a very popular concept. Uh, for instance, you will be able to query uh, the metadata, iceberg metadata of a table and uh, extract useful information out of them. Uh, for instance, files, partitions, uh, log entries, metadata meta adjacent. These are very popular uh, metadata tables. Uh, currently, Iceberg uh, uh, Trino implements Iceberg metadata tables as Trino system tables. To give some background of how system tables are queried in Trino, uh, system tables have uh, three run modes. All no, uh, all nodes mode in which uh, tables like nodes table uses. Uh, in this case, when all node mode uh, is used, the query is executed in all worker nodes and uh, results are written independently. Uh, for instance, the nodes table uh, in which um, the node ID, uh, IP address of all the nodes are written. Uh, this is executed independently in all nodes. Uh, and then there is uh, all coordinators mode in which um, tables like queries table, uh, system uh, tables called queries table uses it. Uh, in this mode, uh, the query is executed in all the coordinators. Uh, in, in the queries table, it is used to uh, extract information about all the uh, currently running queries within uh, the Trino cluster. And the third mode is the single coordinator mode, uh, which the iceberg metadata table uses. Uh, single coordinator mode basically means the processing of uh, uh, the query happens only in a uh, single coordinator. Uh, this might be okay for most of the cases, uh, but Netflix has tables that are more than 1 million uh, files and some tables even have 100 GPs of metadata files. Uh, so in this case, having uh, the entire data processed only by single coordinator is time consuming and sometimes it is even impossible to run those queries. Uh, so we re-implemented the metadata tables to run in distributed mode. As most of you uh, might know, uh, this is how the iceberg metadata is organized. Uh, there's a catalog which holds a pointer to the current metadata JSON file. Uh, the metadata JSON file has details about table schema, properties, snapshots, and manifest list. Each manifest list has pointers to manifest files, which in turn has pointers to actual data files. This two-level hierarchy helps Iceberg library to efficiently prune and read data from Iceberg table. When we perform a table scan on Iceberg data table, uh, Trino talks to Iceberg library to get a list of files to read, and each file is converted into an Iceberg split, which is then distributed to all worker nodes to read and process the data within the file. Uh, similar to this, for files metadata table, we generated splits based on a uh, manifest list. Uh, each worker node processes data files belonging to the manifest file in split it is processing. Uh, for partitions metadata table, we generated a view on top of the files table and grouped based on the partition key. Uh, like, uh, this distributed uh, mode of uh, reading metadata table uh, helped us achieve like two to thousand x performance uh, in um, improvements in reading metadata tables. Uh, and uh, metadata table read is a very popular use case within Netflix uh, due to uh, a lot of our audit queries happen on these metadata tables. 
Another feature, uh, interesting feature uh, we have developed internally is the incremental data read. Uh, incremental data read is something new we are working on, uh, mainly for the change data capture use case. I won't be getting much into the CDC use case, uh, but what this feature lets you do is have options that can be specified to be used while performing a table read. This is kind of similar to options feature that is available in Apache Spark. Right now, we support start and end snapshot IDs and start and end timestamp options. Uh, this can also be used to create views. Uh, using uh, the views created based on this reading options, uh, you can expose uh, a view to user uh, based on uh, the data in certain uh, snapshot range or in timestamp range alone. Uh, this might be useful uh, in case where if you want to process only the newly arrived data, then you can specify the timestamp within which you want to read the data. So that uh, instead of uh, processing the entire data set, you can just process the data that has arrived within uh, these two timestamps. Uh, so these are like some of the uh, internal features that we have built, uh, and we would like to contribute uh, as much as possible back to the open source. Uh, coming back to uh, coming to the future uh, uh, future work we are planning to do from Trino side, uh, we aim to stay as close as possible to the open source Trino. So we are working on integrating open source changes within our internal Trino fork as soon as uh, it is released. Uh, so we are trying to build a nightly build setup so that uh, we can uh, get fast access to all the uh, amazing changes that are being done in open source. Uh, another major piece of work uh, we will be focusing next year is on Iceberg REST catalog integration. Uh, we have had issues with different engines using different versions of Iceberg clients. For instance, older versions of ICE uh, client drops unrecognized metadata table during commit. Uh, using IS gives a consistent views of metadata across all the engines and tools. Also, integration with other engines would become seamless and much easier. We can also optimize the storage and retrieval of the metadata. For instance, um, we have metadata JSON files over tens of GBs and loading them often seems problematic. But most of the data in the metadata JSON file are historical data, which might not be needed for simple treat queries. Having a lightweight table load for such scenarios would be helpful. Uh, Trino Gateway is another interesting project we are looking forward to adopt. We see a lot of uh, work going on in the community side on this project. We also see a lot of benefits using it within Netflix. Uh, historically, we have had our own caching solution, but we had issues with engines not being able to utilize the cache effectively. The sheer volume of the queries and scale of data reads resulted in very low cache hit ratio. We would like to experiment further on current OSS caching features and identify how to use them effectively for good performance gain. Uh, we also want to provide Trino as an option for our users to run their ETL pipelines. Hence, we are looking forward to experiment with Project Degrade. Uh, here are some of the uh, open source project links that uh, we discussed uh, in this talk. Uh, like for Maestro, Genie, Atlas, and Metacat. Uh, and that's always uh, we are having. Please do check out our career portal for openings. Uh, thank you so much for listening to the talk. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.